This is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love Online every Saturday and Tuesday. We're about to bring the word and we are dealing with how God handles stuff that he's not happy with in this day and age as well as the way he did it back then. He knows how to handle when all stuff is going helter skelter and we're worried about being bombed and we're worried about the mark of the beast and we're worried about all the schemes of the powers that be. God's still in control. I'm going to share that with you in Genesis chapter 11 coming up in a minute. And I also share with you how he confounds those that think they got it going on. Hmm. All right. Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Bless the word, Lord. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and turn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth, of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel or Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Wow. Huh. You see how God handled that. Now, Nowadays, we have people that are reaching to the stars, people going for the AI scheme. They're, they're trying to combine the DNA of human with machine. They're trying to play God. They're trying to decide how they want their children to look, what color hair they want them to have. They want to co combine humans, hybrids and all that. They're doing all this madness. They're creating the mark of the beast. They've already done it. And they're figuring ways to implement so that the powers that be may be in total control, running the whole earth, ruling the masses, handling all the money, and keeping all the riches and the power. Now, we as the normal people of society are, many of us suffer from fear. Many of us are worried. Many of us wonder what's going to become of us. What's going to become of me? What's going to become of my family? Whatever the case may be. But listen, you have to remember who's in control. No matter what schemes, no matter what, what games they play in the top one percentile or top two percentile, running everything all over the world. Yeah. As much as they want to make you think all the nations are separate, trust me, they're not. The bottom line is God is still the head man in control. And he can put his hand out when the president's about to put us in jeopardy. Whatever president, whether it's this one or the next one, he can put his hand out and give that president instant Alzheimer's. He can give him a stroke. He can give him a heart attack. He can wreak havoc in his life. So he has to be removed from office and someone else takes that person's place. And if that person starts wreaking havoc in the world, God can remove them too. All God has to do is inhale and they can drop like flies. Remember that. He's in control. He does allow people to do what they want to do. And then they pay the consequence for doing it. 
That's called being turned over to a reprobate mind. Because we have human beings that are crazy enough to think that they really are gods themselves. They really are the power that be, the proverbial power that be. Bad English, but you get me. So when you look at what's going on, you have no need to panic. Your God is in control. But you have to remember whose side you're going to be on. Because if you agree, if you come under agreement with the system, and you go along with the ways of the powers that be, and you buy into their hype, you buy into their propaganda, you buy into their scams, guess what? You will pay the piper along with them. You don't want to do that. As long as you are under God's leadership, as long as you're under God's anointing, that doesn't mean you have it going on and it's, everything is perfect. That's not what that's saying. But as long as you are under God's leadership and, and, and you are under his lordship and you submit to his, to his word, to his ways, to his standards, you submit to him. You, you seek his face. You seek his, his guidance, his instruction. You seek his understanding. You seek his insights to help you navigate through life as safely as possible. You will not have to succumb to all of the havoc that others will. You notice they were scattered abroad. They couldn't even communicate with each other. Can you imagine brother and sister sitting there talking as they're working with the system? And next thing you know, they're, they're both, they both sound like they're talking gibberish to each other. And then what, you know, what's wrong with you? Well, what's wrong with you? And neither one of them understand what they're saying. Imagine that. God can confuse a person so much they wouldn't know their name if they saw it in neon lights. He can do it with the president. He can do it with the king of that country. He can do it with the prince of that country. He can go all over the world and bring mass confusion. And while the people are panicking, they don't understand God's in control. He knows what he's doing. So when you see that happening, you've got two things going on. This is semi-prophetic. When you see stuff like that begin to happen, they got it on the news, let's say. I haven't seen it. I'm just saying, let's say they have it on the news. Uh, 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 General so-and-so or, or the head Senate or this or that or Congress, whatever. There seems to be something strange going on. They're, they're having problems, uh, mental issues. And, and uh, one had a nervous breakdown. One committed suicide. One... Um, is is confused. They don't know who they are or they're having Alzheimer's attacks or the other one had a stroke or one had a heart attack. Why is all this happening within the, you know, the group all at once? That's God. That's God. And listen, as much as you think Satan's got a lot of power, trust me, there are times when God wants to do that. He'll, he'll whistle for Satan, beckon him and have him do his dirty work. You go over there and you attack them with this. You attack them with the other. You go over there and you get him with AIDS. You get her with so-and-so. And next thing you know, you're wondering, why are all these leaders of the nation crumbling? What's going on? God. God. That's why we need to pray. We need to pray that God hinders the folks that are trying to wreak havoc in this society. There will be people that are trying to create wars. I remember years ago when I was a little kid, my father told me, and I mean, that man had insight and wisdom to beat the band, I'm telling you. He told me years ago, war makes money for nations. It kills folks, but they make a lot of money off of war. And there are times that countries and nations will strategically create a scenario of warfare and it's all a game because they're strategizing to make the bucks go up where they need to go so they can pad their pockets 
at the expense of people's blood, bloodshed over nothing. The war, half the time, the wars out there are shams. Listen, you will find that there are some things that look like attacks, but they're not attacks from Al-Qaeda and from this one, that one, and the other one. A lot of them are set up from the politicians right here in this nation. And what they're doing is strategizing. We create a crisis over here, over there, and over there. And then we lay out the solution right here. And they have to flock to us and worship us. And we will determine what we're going to do with these little, little nothings. Mm -hmm. Create a crisis, right? Fabricate a solution or fabricate a crisis, a crisis, create a solution. People react and you have it right in the palm of your hand. You can tell them exactly what to do. And they're so afraid because they're not focusing on God. They're so afraid they do whatever the system tells them. Take the mark. That's one thing they'll tell them to do, won't they? A lot of things you'll be surprised that are strategic things they're doing in society. And if you don't have an ear to hear God's spirit talking to you, you'll be swept up and scattered with the rest of them. You'll be confused and confounded and overwhelmed like the rest of them, like the folks at Babel, the Tower of Babel. See, God's not going to allow anybody to even think they're going to compete with him. He said, I'm a jealous God. There will be no gods before me. I'm it. Hmm. I'm the only one that can answer prayer. I'm the only one that's self-contained. You got to build your little God. You got to go out, chop the tree down and get your little idol. Some of your idols are from a stump of a tree. Some of your idols are from the internet. Hmm. This country is an idol worshiping country, whether it wants to believe it or not, because it's so, it's so civilized. Right. But there is a, a, an, an amazing amazingly scary amount of idol worship in this country. And we're dealing with cell phones, selfies, internet porn. Hmm. Mm hmm We're dealing with human trafficking, sex slaves. There's a lot of mess going on. Drugs being sent in certain neighborhoods to keep a certain group of people down or different groups of people that they count as worthless. Keep them down, keep them dummy down, keep them out of it so that they don't have to worry about them waking up and smelling the coffee and realizing what they're doing. Yeah. Alcohol, uh, the drug, the, uh, the, um, the liquor stores being strategically placed. When everybody wanted to make, you notice how the powers that be tried to make the Black Panthers look like they were monsters, look like they were villains. The Black Panthers were stopping the drugs from being infiltrated by the powers that be. They were stopping the drugs dead in their tracks. They were, they were fighting against uh, uh, liquor stores being opened. They were doing everything. They were teaching the kids, educating them with high levels of education. They were feeding the poor, getting groceries for the star, for the struggling mothers and the, and the old people. They were helping them out. A lot of things going on that we're not going to hear about because the powers that be want to paint them as villains. So they frame them. They do false accusations. They end up doing time. Why? Get them out of the way. They're messing with our agenda. You hear what I'm saying? So once they're out of the picture, you got the prostitutes, you got the druggies, you got the drug dealers, you got all this stuff going on. Why? Because their agenda, they're building their tower of Babel right on top of society's blood. We have got to follow God in these last days. 
We cannot get caught up in the programs, the propagandas, the lies, the hypes, the nonsense that's being shoved down our throat. Gurg regurgitate that crap back up. Don't go for it. Don't go for the lies. Don't trust anyone other than God. See, it's not only Satan backing you up. See, Satan will sodomize your dignity. He'll sodomize your life. He'll sodomize your mind. He'll sodomize your destiny. And he'll tell you, back up, baby. I got something for you. And he'll sock it to you. And he'll rape you. And he'll cause you to bleed. And he'll cause you to be injured. And he'll cause you to die. That's the whole purpose. Steal, kill, destroy. Well, guess what? The powers that be are doing the same thing. And they're telling society, back up, baby. Come on, back up a little bit more. I've got something for you. Bring it to me, baby. That's right. Come up under my control. You have to be prayerful in these last days. You have to acknowledge and, and ask God what's, you have to consult with God on every level. Because these are schemes. Whatever they do is going to benefit them way more than it's going to benefit you. And the benefit that you get is almost a joke compared to what they're getting. But see, God has a payday. What you don't get now, oh, you're going to get, baby. God will bless you if you're in Christ, if you're a merciful heart. I always tell everybody, Here's one of the keys to getting on God's good side. Be as merciful, tenderhearted, and loving as you can be with your fellow man. Because God said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. He also said, to the merciful, I'll show myself merciful. To the pure, I'll show myself pure. But to the froward, I'll show myself frowning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where's that bill? I was clowning with it later, earlier. But yeah, I'll show myself frowning, all right? And I'll tell you, bend over and crack a smile. I got something for you. Yeah. See, God has a payday. Only that booty whooping is going to last throughout eternity. So I say to you, benefit here on the face of this earth, in the land of the living, so you could also benefit throughout eternity. And you don't have to fall for the hype of society. You don't have to go for the nonsense. See, not every part of America is going to be judged because there are areas and regions where God's blessing is over certain vicinities. You have to know that. So it's always a good thing to ask God, Lord, if not another country, where do I go within this country? God sent me to a desert area. It's a rural area, beautiful. Where will God send you if you take time to ask? And he also laid on my mind that this area would be similar to what the Bible refers to as city of refuge. It'll be a safe haven when all hell breaks loose. So my question to you is, have you consulted with God as to where the best place for you to be is when all hell breaks loose to keep you safe, to keep you living fat off the land without struggling? Huh? Do you believe that God will make your provision easy? Do you believe God at all? Now is the time to pray. Today is the day of salvation. I ask you who have not done so, give your heart to the Lord. And if you have done so and you backslidden, trust me, you need to rededicate your life to the Lord and line up with his will and his word, please. You want to be saved and delivered from this. You want to be free from the price that they pay. What did God do? He sent the angels to go and get locked. 
Lot and his family, they could not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah until they got Lot and his family out of there. Are you one of those that God will send angels, will send people to help you get out of there before he rains down his terror in your region? Are you one that would escape the calamity or will you be swept up because you've gone for the lies, hook, line, and sinker? You've been lied to, bamboozled, you've been fooled, you've been played. And the Bible says, and the people like it so. They want it that way. There are people that that just totally go for everything society feeds them, everything the media says, the news. The news is one-sided based on who owns it, based on who's paying the bills, who's paying their salaries. They're the ones who decide what gets spoken about and what's not, what gets lied about and what truth comes out. They're the ones. That's why there are a lot of beautiful things that happen in life you never hear about. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to know. It can be the government, the government itself selling out America right out from under us. One day, who knows if we'll wake up and find a whole nother country. Never announced. And all of a sudden, we got soldiers in different uniforms running the country. When did this happen? That's what you call the frog being boiled in the water. You, you put a frog in the water. You've, you, you've heard us say this a million times. Put a frog in cold water, let him swim around, have fun. You slowly turn up the heat in that pot. And that frog's just swimming away. Next thing you, whoo, wow, I need to take me a nap. I think I'm going to take one of them naps that Lynn takes. And he go kick back and float on his back, cross his legs. and. Next thing you know, he's cooked. He's frog soup. Dead. Dead as a doornail. And someone comes to consume that bad boy. And that's what's happening to this country and many other countries. Slowly being boiled to death. And was so dummy down with selfies. Oh, Facebook. Oh, did you see me on Facebook? Or oh, so dummy down by all that. So in love with the with the uh, entertainers. I remember Marlene shared entertaining as another word for trance or something. Uh, I, f I forget the exact meaning. But it's like putting people in a trance and they're totally out of touch with reality because they're so caught up in entertainment. Right. So we've got to watch ourselves. Nobody's going to watch our back like we are. God will have our back if we got him. Do you have the Lord in your life? Please reconsider. This is a dangerous time. It's not time for playing tiddlywinks. Not time to have your head buried in the soil. Hmm? Not time to play Russian roulette with your life, with your destiny, with your soul. Straighten up and fly right. You got to get lined up with God if you want to escape the wrath that is to come. I'm going to leave you with that. God bless you. And please read Revelations chapter 13 through chapter 19. God bless you.